Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video I'm going to go through a few changes that I've made to my rig with the 130 PDS and then we're going to talk about a collaboration I'm doing with Joe Navarra and James from DSO Imager. Uh, we're working on a really lovely target and I can't wait to share it with you. My name's Glenn and you're watching Astro Bloke. So hi everyone, I hope you're all keeping well and welcome back to my latest video. So um, in recent videos I've been doing lots of modifications to the 130 PDS, uh, the scope here. Um, it's sitting on my EQ6. Tonight we're going to be working on a collaboration. I'm going to be adding some more data to the Flying Bat and Squid Nebula. So James from DSO Imager uh, invited myself and Joe Navarra to join him and work on this very faint target as the oxygen side of it is quite difficult to capture. So I've been working on it for a few nights and tonight is going to be my final bit of capture and then hopefully we're going to get all the data together and see what we've got. So I quickly want to just go over some updates I've done with the mount. I haven't actually changed anything physically as much as such, it's just been a little bit of a rejig of everything. So originally I had the guide scope mounted here and the camera and focusing tube was up the top. And uh, I had the dovetail plate, this Lost Mandy plate here anyway, and I did put this on with the intention of mounting the guide scope. So that's allowed me to get that weight a little bit down um, and it means that I could push the uh, tube a little bit further up the rings and allow space for the camera and everything to be underneath. Now one of the other changes I had to make was the EAF, I originally had spun the focus around so the EAF was down because it just looked a lot neater, but I've now changed that back to how it originally is. So the controls, the manual controls are down and the EAF sits up the top. It helps me with the balance and obviously I can get the camera underneath and it doesn't foul against the, uh, the, the plates there. One of the nice thing is before, when I had everything mounted on top, the only way I could balance it um, was this uh, Lost Mandy plate section I've got here. The front end of it was actually down here into the saddle. And I didn't, I mean, it wasn't a problem. It was all working fine, but I didn't really like it. And I much prefer this now. It, it, it just looks a much better um, setup and uh, just looks better for me and uh, I'm happier with it. So everything's in place. The only big change I'm gonna make next is I'm going to be shortening all of the wires that are in here. Um, I wanna get rid of all this bunching. So I'm gonna get wires that are the correct length and then that will be what I'll do next. Now, one of the wires I have changed is the power lead to the EQ6R Pro. I had a long lead uh, of silicon, but it actually developed a fault. At this end where it was flexing, one of the wires had obviously broken inside, so I stripped it down, stripped all the wires back, cut it short, and I've now got it being powered out of the Pegasus power box. So I just bought myself a one of these uh, 5.1 millimeter to 2.1 millimeter adapters, um, soldered it all on, and used some shrink wrap to make it nice and neat, and that works really well and gets rid of another cable from the ground to the rig. So now there's just the one cable, which is the power lead to the Pegasus Powerbox Advance. So I'm really happy with the rig. I think it's a much neater solution. It looks nice and uh, it feels a bit more compact actually without all the stuff sticking up that high um, up the top. So uh, what we're gonna do next is so we're gonna go and get this set up in the garden and we're gonna take some more images of the Flying Bat and Squid Nebula. So, um, Thank you ever so much, James, for the invite to the collaboration. And of course, Joe, always a pleasure working with you, my good friend. And uh, I can't wait to see what results all three of us come up with. So, good luck with your imaging. 
and I'm now going to go and get this set up and capture some more data. Okay, so we're all plugged in and set up and uh, the scope's balanced. So what we're gonna do now, switch everything on. Um, we're gonna polar align using the eye polar and um, get everything set up, ready for the imaging session. So uh, the roof's just opened on the observatory as well. So that's uh, cooling the camera down and that's gonna be um, moving on to another mosaic that I'm working on, which is the Heart Nebula. Um, but uh, more about that later. Um, and what I'm going to need to do is knock this light off so that I don't muck up the images for the observatory. Right, let's turn this power on. That's everything on. And then we just need to turn this computer on. Right, so all I've got to do now, mini PC's on, jump on the... Uh, well, I'm going to start on the iPad, actually, to do the polar alignment, because that's easier outside. And then I'm going to be inside on the laptop, and I'll remote in with that, and then we'll get the Nina set up, and we'll start imaging. Right, going to uh, move that camera up. 